Hi there. Um, I put this video together on Millstone Pool, just really out of frustration because having come down here for the first time in the run up to the visit, I literally couldn't find anything um, online, YouTube, with the exception of the website, obviously, which gave sort of limited information. I couldn't find anything that gave me enough information about the venue, the stock, the type of bait that that might work on here, the rigs, etc., etc. Um, so I thought on this visit, I'll try and put something together that people could at least refer to. Uh, there's no preaching going on here. I'm not a sponsored angler. I, I've been carp fishing for over 40 years, so I do have favourite companies, um, products that I use. Um, and in that time, I'll, in, in the time of this video, I'm going to tell you there's no production on this. This is all done on my iPhone. There's no um, assistance with audio. I've got no uh, any mics or anything else like that. So apologies. Oh. Apologies in advance for, that would have been good, wouldn't it? Apologies in advance for any lack of quality from either of those two aspects. But like I say, it's really, if you're gonna come down to here, Millstone Pool, uh, one of the Mirapool Fisheries uh, lakes, um, my aim is really to just try and give you some more information about the lake, show you how I'm approaching the fishing on it, and hopefully give you some pointers if you're coming down here. Um, I think probably the first thing to note is that we are down here on the first week of May 2022. Uh, the weather forecast over, or the weather over the week has actually been quite nice. Uh, very settled, sort of northeasterly winds, but not particularly cold winds, and they've been quite light. Uh, temperatures in the evening down to probably six or seven degrees and maximum temperatures during the day of about 18 to 21 degrees. So um, quite nice weather really, uh, like I say, settled. Um, it's obviously pre-spawn so that they're not, they're not spawning, although I'm recording this part of the video towards the end of the week and uh, there is some signs that they might be on their way and certainly the, the bailiff Simon down here, he's told us that some of the other Mirapool fisheries lakes have started to see signs of spawning. So um, whilst we've not seen it, the lake in the last 24 to 48 hours has really uh, slowed down, um, seeing less movement of fish, catching less. Um, so, there, could, there is a possibility that that could be down to the spawning. But ultimately, like I say, this video here is quite simply how I've come down here, tackled the, the lake and what you know, my results. Um, I'm not preaching to people. I'm not telling you this is how you should do it. I always think that people should fish how they best, how they most feel comfortable. Um, I always think that uh, you catch fish sort of based on confidence and one of the things with confidence is that you're using rigs that you know work for you, you're using bait that you know works for you. So um, based on that, stick with what you want, but hopefully, like I say, there'll be some pointers here that, sorry, uh, I've got uh, caught out. Uh, th there'll be some pointers here that you may um, take away and hopefully benefit your fishing if you do come down here. Certainly, whatever, whatever, this is going to help you if you've never been down here before because it's a more uh, intuitive video than the very few short clips that I found on YouTube prior to coming up down here. So hopefully it will help. Um, I'm not looking for thumbs up or thumbs down. Like I say, this is just quite simply my take on um, my fishing. We, you know, I've, I've had a, I, I feel confident enough that I can tell you about this because I had a good start to the week. So, so far I've had a 20, four thirties, four forties, a 50 and a 60. Um, caught in a combination actually of mainly two different rig types. Uh, which I'll 
um, talk about in a different part of this video and two or three different bait scenarios uh, again which I'll cover a bit later so that you can get an idea of what I've been doing. Um, I'm fishing in Swim 8 which is just the other side of the island from this bay here. Uh, I've got this just rod out just because I thought I saw one or two fish moving here in the very shallow area. Uh, so I thought I'd just come and see if I could sneak one out. In actual fact, the very first fish that I caught at the start of this session was from here because I saw some clouding out, up, put a single bait out to it um, within half an hour or so. Of, within a half an hour or so of actually getting here on the fishery, I'd, I caught a fish. Uh, that was the smallest one off off the lot that was 27 pound i think sort of smallest one for me um i'm here with two others um one of them he's made a move yesterday he's struggling at the moment hasn't hasn't caught anything yet um and matthew fishing down in swim 11 which i believe is one of the sort of hot swims on the fishery um he's caught three unfortunately he caught a he foul hooked one as well uh, whether it whether it came out its mouth and went into its fin but that if we had weighed it that was a big 40 early 50 pounder quite easily um so it's a bit uh, a bit of a shame for him there um strangest thing that for us that we're not used to is that it is very much a daytime fishery um i think out of the what have i called 10 out of the 13 fish only two have come during the hours of darkness and even one of them was half an hour before dark um so you do get a good night's sleep but if you're anything like us where we do treat it as a bit of a holiday and we pop out to the local restaurants at lunchtime you're probably going to be missing out um a couple of hours of the key fishing time so yeah i would say if you can probably the plan would be to stay and fish quite hard during the day because it has proven a daytime fishery i know certainly we tend to pack up about midday have a quick shower and then go into the local town which is only a couple of minutes away from here but i've had two fish at 11 30 quarter to 12 literally just as we we're about to reel in so it's um it's a it's a daytime fishery and this is something that simon the owner and the bailiff um told us i've got to say he gives some great advice pretty much everything that he's told us has has paid off has come true um so it's worth having a chat with him listening to what he says uh you know obviously as someone who uh runs a lake and, and owns a lake he needs or wants the um the business so he's his business is for you guys to catch fish when you're down here and hopefully book again it's an absolutely beautiful lake from a, you know from an environmental point of view um it's it's cracking it's absolutely superb uh, very easy on the eye lovely place to be not noisy there is a road just passes by gets a little bit busy with early morning sort of farm workers but when i say busy i'm i'm talking relatively you know we're in the the uh depth of the countryside in the middle of France here so you could probably walk down the road blindfolded and not get hit by anything. Um, nature all around, there's, uh, there's some couple of koi pew I think, um, red squirrels, various different birds of prey, there are kingfishers, uh, so wild boar in the fields behind so yeah it's, it's just a lovely place to be, very atmospheric um, you know, very peaceful, cracking place to fish. I've really, really enjoyed myself. Definitely coming back here. Anyway, I'm going on. I'm going to um, obviously start putting some video together that's going to hopefully be a little bit more uh, instruct not instructive, that's wrong, informative for people coming down to fish here. And maybe even give some ideas for people fishing in France, maybe for the first time, whether it be here or, or other lakes. I don't confess to be an expert. I have fished in France, various lakes, mainly um, Mirapool Fisheries Lakes, um, for probably the last 10 to 15 years. Um, had a, always had a, a level of success, this particular, session has been 
a um, little bit better than I could have anticipated if I'm perfectly honest with you, I'm more than happy with it. Um, it doesn't seem a lot actually, you know, 10 fish in, and I've lost one, uh, 10 fish in the space of what we're on now, six days, um, in comparison to some of the other uh, lakes that we've been on where we've almost doubled that and everyone's caught about the same amount. Um, but the fish here have been bigger, the, certainly the average weight here is, is larger uh, than some of these other fisheries. So anyway, on that, on that note, I am going to get on with the rest of the video. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, hopefully it's helpful and uh, yeah, good luck if you do come down here. So just got here at Millstone Pool on Saturday the 30th of um, April 2022. Um, there's the actual mill just over there. There's a sort of dammed area over there. And I have decided to fish this swim here. Got to be honest at the moment, I can't remember what number this is um, I've got an island out in front of me there the bailiff says it's uh, pretty much margin fishing which suits me down to the ground not quite sure what level of margin he means I don't know if you can actually see that but obviously it's fairly shallow in these uh, immediate margins but that looks uh, quite decent there, and then they've got a second little island there. Um, at the moment, <coughs> up in the shallow end, there are quite a few signs of moving fish. Um, it's, it's a very nice warm day today. And uh, this is the shallow end of the lake. So I'm Assuming the fish are coming up here, mooching around. I've not been here that long to be able to take too much of a look. But I have seen in the margins a few tadpoles. Um, just bits and pieces. There's a lot of uh, midges flying around. So in here, I'm going to be quiet because despite the fact I've only been here five minutes... I have actually put some rods out, just effectively free lined into here where not that long ago, there was some clouding again, right down in these margins here. So just gonna see if that, while I'm actually setting up, if that pays any dividends. So I've got those three rods out at the moment. Like I say, it gets really shallow. Um, not physically seen any signs of, when I say any signs of fish, I've seen some clouding up, but I've not seen any fish, uh, no rolls, no tails, anything at all like that. Um, this is very, very, very shallow now up here. Um, but the wind's blowing in this direction. The weather's quite warm. It's about 20 degrees and Hopefully, this might encourage the fish up to this end of the lake. It's quite nice that I've got those uh, little gaps there, there and here. So any fish that are coming in and out of this bay, I'm hoping that I can actually um, fish for those as they sort of move in and out by putting, um, by putting some bait out in front of, in between both of these sort of points here. So that's the plan and uh, we'll see how we get on. I'm just taking a look at the moment, sorry. Um, and I'm not really seeing the clouding up that I was seeing half an hour or so ago when I first moved up here. But that's obviously not to say they're not here. Um, according to the bailiff, 80% of the fish get caught during the daytime and obviously only 20% at night. So I thought it's worth just putting something out, seeing if there's anything 
around. It might be nice to get off to an early start. There's some clouding there. Now, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and zoom in. It's probably not going to show. No, it's not. Um, but there's some new clouding just come up, just down there. Uh, some little bubbles coming up with it as well. So, obviously still something around. So like I say, ah, oh, and some more just there. So they're obviously still around. So fingers crossed. Like I say, they're just free lined at the moment. I didn't want to introduce the sort of splashing noise of um, leads being cast. So I will uh, update you in a while. Hopefully, potentially, who knows what the fish. Okay, so after about, I don't know, 45 minutes in this spot where I said that I thought I might have seen something, um, just put the rods out while I was um, starting to set up just in the swim next door and uh, got a single beep, ran up and caught this little beauty and it is a little beauty it's 23 12 so it's not not a big one not by not by any stretch but it put up a really decent fight and it's still very lively now okay there we go 23 pounds 12 ounces first fish only been here probably realistically a couple of hours you know just getting the gear around so well chuffed with that starting the, the session hopefully as we mean to carry on. Just wait until the lights get a little bit stronger because it's half decent. 43 pounds, four ounces. Solid mirror. Oi, oi. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> God damn. Oh. Definitely going to give me a slap, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. That lovely, good, strong fight that guy gave me. Put it down and get some photographs. Okay, so literally flick this one out. I don't know. So within five minutes of, of casting it out, uh, it ripped off. Um, yellow dumbbell uh, wafter. And this one here is 45 pounds and four ounces. <clears throat> Lovely fish, really beautiful. Put up a really decent fight as well. That was from just behind me over towards the, uh, the point there. We're going to get him back and uh, hopefully, without sounding greedy, see him when he's bigger. Oh, so, third, fourth fish of the session. Two lovely 40s and a, an upper 20, no, a lower 20 actually, 23 pounder. And it's uh, been capped so far by this cracking 57 pound 11 ounce mirror which is my personal best and I'm properly tough with it so we're going to let this go now so say goodbye what a lovely fish eh? look at that absolutely cracking this lovely beautiful sun here at Millstone Pool so I'm just going to let it go Thank you, Matt. Jump right out of front of Rob there. Yeah. Oh.
Okay, so uh, we just got back from lunch, had a walk around the lake, sat with Rob over there for a little while. And uh, when I came back, I just walked past the, uh, an area, a shallow area off the lake that Matt and I this morning had walked down in our waders um, whilst taking some photographs of another fish. And I think that that must have disturbed a lot of the silt and some of the fish have come in. So as I walked past, when I was walking past fairly slowly and keeping an eye out, I actually, um, I disturbed a fish, but it made me stop and look, and I could see that there was a little bit of movement in there. So I've got the rods out, literally flicked them out, put um, a few live maggots out, just handfuls of live maggots, and I would say less than five minutes, caught this little beauty of 39 pounds and an ounce, I think it is. Cracking fish. So uh, that's very grateful for a very short period of time. Okay, just had this lovely sort of chunky 41 pounder um, from a similar spot that I've been fishing from since the start of the week. I think it's probably the fourth or fifth that I've had off the spot out in front of me. Um, caught it on a very small 12 mil dark red pop-up topped with uh, a quarter maggot clip with three little uh, imitation red maggots and five live red maggots. Uh, seems to be doing the trick. This is, that's the rig I've been fishing on that same spot every time and that's what I've been catching on. There it is, lovely. Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Try again. This is my first fish of the trip, good to get off the mark. Uh, saw a fish roll this morning, probably about four rod lengths out from the bank. Pulled the right hand rod in, cast it out a couple of times to get it onto the right spot. Probably 20, 25 minutes later, enjoying the sun, and off it went. And here we have it. Excellent. Have it. First one, very, very happy, hard fighting common. <laughs> lovely, lovely condition, yeah. lovely colouring. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Not quite finally, but after a tough few days, dropping one on a showing fish, proved again. Thanks, thanks to me, you showed him it. 
All thanks to Richard Stankrum, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that glory. <laughs> He's on it again. He's only on it again. That's a nice one. Nice. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Two minutes before. I've just come up and got the, uh, the waist ring back. <coughs> Look at that. Oops, sorry, I'm talking about trying to video something. There's no yeah. point at this stage. <sighs> oh, yes. That's your PB as well, isn't it? PB. 55.4. 55.4. <laughs> right, so came back from lunch, put the rods out, saw a few uh, showing up in the bowl which hasn't really fished that well this week to be honest. Um, I caught one earlier, uh, 38 pounds 7, still fish showing on the same spot. So threw the same rig back out, rebaited, put the same rig back out and probably about 45 minutes later, uh, blinding tape. Didn't think it was that big to start with but uh, it certainly put up a bit of a fight after a few minutes and then uh, we've ended up with 55 pound four which for me is a new personal best so what a fantastic way, last full day. I'm over the moon. What bait was it caught on, Matt? Bait. It was uh, actually on the same one I've been using most of the week, which is the mainline um, pineapple pop-up. So on a Ronnie rig. Worked to treat single on its own. A few maggots around it at various times, but mainly cast to uh, showing fish. So yeah, works to treat. Done the job. Excellent. Well Fantastic. done. I'll try let's and let's have a little look at you. it. Uh, here we go. There we are. Lovely, that's what you like, isn't it? A fish that has to be f photographed in the water because it's big enough. Yeah. Well done. Love it. Thank you to go back. Thank you very much. You've made my holiday. All right, here we go. Yes, fantastic. I'm so happy. <laughs> we'll be coming back, that's for sure. Thank you very much, Neil Stone. Okay, so what I've got here in this mix is some dead maggots. I will be putting in some live maggots but I'm just waiting for them to effectively come alive after having been suffocated for a couple of days. I have got some cooked up maize, some cooked up hemp, some essential cell and some main lines activated nut mix as well as some main line syrup uh, tiger nut that's all going to be going out on this rig here which is a dumbbell wafter just tipped with a little bit of plastic sweet corn and it's on a combi link okay so finally i'm also going to add some uh, cream smart liquid after itself. So this combo, which is the mini pop-up link, uh, I then use a cord and mag maggot clip, the, the small one that sits on top. And in a combination with some live red maggots, I also use the Enterprise Tackle 
um, pop-up imitation maggots just to give it a little bit of a lift the dead sorry the live maggots on it counteract the weight so it actually becomes quite critically balanced if you get it right I tend to use three um, of the imitation maggots and probably I tend I put one on then about three real maggots then another one on two or three real maggots and then put another fake one on and then clip it up um, if it's too heavy I just pull a maggot off and uh, that then obviously lightens the weight a little bit to make it more critically balanced So this is the original mill house, obviously overlooking the lake. And in here we have the sort of small kitchenette type area, uh, microwave, gas hob. There's a food fridge with a small freezer. Kitchen area for washing up with some cutlery provided. Uh, there's pots and pans and plates provided. There's a small chest freezer there for your bait. And uh, obviously all with this beautiful outlook off the, off the lake. Okay, down in here, uh, a couple of very nice, um, comfortable toilets. And just along here, it's a decent sized shower room. So all those sort of facilities, absolutely superb, help make the whole fishing experience just that little bit more comfortable.